trying to get a rotor off of a hub on the card. It's just a slide-on rotor. 32-ounce ball peen will work, but you're going to work at hitting it to try and get it off. What I prefer to use is a short handle, 8-pound sledge. Usually within a couple hits, it will come off. Normally you would hit from the back side to pop it free, but a lot of times there's things in the way and reduce your accuracy. So I'll hit from the front side and I'll try to hit the surface of the rotor right here. As you can hear, that rotor's frozen on there. Support your caliper in a, in a safe manner. You can hang it off to the side free. Gently, and then you strike that surface. Now this is opposite for me, but I'm going to strike it and we'll pop it free. Off she comes. Now with a 32 ounce hammer, that might have taken you five or six hits, maybe ten, who knows. But with an eight pound short handle sledge, pop them off rather easy and rather quickly. The reason I did this video is there's a tool out there that I think if you use it improperly is pretty dangerous. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is there's a tool that connects in that you can take and use your caliper slide bracket mounting gear. And what would happen is you would put a bolt through here with a nut here and then you would tighten the bolt and then you would apply pressure to the rotor to pop the rotor. So it would push this way and pop the rotor and cock the rotor off. In theory, it's a great tool, great idea. But this is a machine surface here. Keep the caliper and the caliper slide bracket straight. These ears on this car happen to be aluminum. You can bend this ear out of place. You can break this ear off if you apply too much pressure to take this off. I've had these, especially on Mazdas and Nissans, where there's this part of the rotor is so frozen to here. So this rot, this rusts in here real bad, locking the rotor on this surface. Okay, it's not only locked on this surface but it's locked here and in those instances if you were to put a nut and bolt and force this this way I know you would bend this or snap this ear off on the car so on those rotors if you strike it like I just showed you you have a good chance of it coming off but in the event it doesn't come off what you have to do is hit your rotor here, 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 okay? And then you strike your rotor here, 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 and here. And that frees up the rust along this edge here in order to pop this off. We're in the rust belt here, so for us, getting off frozen components is an everyday process, so and in extreme cases, you actually have to split the rotor. So what you would do is you would take an air chisel and just run a chisel down this side of the rotor, down this side of the rotor, maybe in three spots, and then you strike the surface and this rotor will split, allowing it to come off. So I just think the tool that pushes here, in theory is a great, this great idea, but in the wrong hands, you can, dab, you can bend this ear or snap this ear off, which will cause a lot more problems. And I feel that striking it with a hammer would be much easier. Now, in this instance here, the reason I said I strike from this surface rather than here, you have much more swing room and accuracy you can swing with here. If you're swinging with a hammer, and you're trying to swing in between here, not to hit your dust shield or anything along those lines, you're gonna come in and hit here. But you could easily miss, hit here, 
done that in the past. Hit here, hit here. Depends how accurate you are with a hammer. And the bigger the head of the hammer, of course, the less room you have to fit it in. Like give you an example. My eight pound sledge takes up a lot of space in here. Now granted this hits with a lot more force, but it's easier just to strike from this side of the rotor and pop it free. Just be careful you don't hit your studs and snap a stud or damage a stud. But in the worst case you hit one, now nah, you damage it, you pop it out, replace it, no big deal. Most cars is fairly simple once the rotor's off to replace a stud. So. Basically, that's why I did this video.